finally going to get back to the Disky project and do the second round of PCBs. We've got the stencil all set up. We've got some chip quick solder paste. We should be good to go. we go these things worked awesome uh, I think we got everything on and uh, hopefully the LEDs are oriented the right way the uh, add-in star actually works pretty good for this uh, good enough to capture some video And we're done. This came out pretty darn good. Still hot, perfect. And we didn't burn the board either, which is super cool. The hot plate burns the board and turns the white kind of yellow. So uh, definitely reflow for the wind. Okay, now we can finally get back to work on this. We can take version 2.1 of our PCB, which actually works, and put it in here where version 1.1 is just kind of hanging out and not doing anything productive. And then we should be able to finally finish this project. If you missed it before, this is the Apollo guidance computer display, uh, fully functional with Raspberry Pi and actually will run the Apollo code. It's going to be fun. And there's the difference between PCB reflow oven, hot plate. The hot plate discolors the white. This is running this hot plate and that was barely hot enough to melt the solder. That was exactly by the chip quick specs and no more. So this is the problem. Check it out. We are finally getting somewhere. We have a panel ready to be lit. That is super cool. All lights are working. got our patrons on the back side going to live in this project forever didn't turn out the best with that pen I'll do better next time but uh, you guys get to be in this project forevermore <laughs> wherever this thing goes whoever is its future steward they take this apart they're gonna find all you guys cheers guys Alright, that's where we got to tonight. Everything is sort of test fit and fitting good, looking good. Our touchscreen display is in, our enunciators are in, our wiring is run through. And uh, now it's time to interface the keyboard and get the Raspberry Pi on the go. Pi is in there. We just need to hook up the two Arduino boards and we will be away. They just hook up uh, serially and we should be in good shape. And yeah. Pretty cool. My own little chunk of Apollo. These boards, as well as many others on my channel, are made by PCBWay.com. $5 for 10 boards, and you can have any project you want made, as well as they do 3D printing, CNC, and other services. Okay, so I rigged up the two Arduinos that are going to run this. They're Arduino Nano, and I believe this is the Pro Micro. This is going to do the keyboard emulation, and the Nano is going to run all the enunciator lights and the software serial for the main touchscreen display that won't actually be touchscreen. 
but that's that's where we got to. All my wiring is run. I just have to terminate it and then start working on the keyboard, which is going to be an adventure. And I have to lower this divider by a couple of millimeters. So we'll just make it a little a uh, little less high, so I have, don't have quite so much clearance issue. And then I also have to make the backlit panel, the enunciator panel, to tell me the legend on it for what things actually are. Out to the garage today, a couple of jobs to tidy up. Air cleaner from the house. This thing is just a fan with some filters in it. It's time to clean it out. It's starting to roar, starting to cavitate. This is my Stanley battery charger and reconditioning device. I'm gonna take this and recondition the battery on my F-150 that's just a little bit weak. Uh, that actually works really, really well to de desulfate them and bring them back for a little bit from the dead. And we're gonna test out the new vacuum and we're gonna re-terminate the connections on the laser just because I have new ferrule crimps for it. That's about it. Hey, nothing to this job. Disconnect the battery so we don't try and recondition the truck modules and we'll just go to battery recondition and just let it howl. It'll take a uh, better part of a day and it'll desulfate this battery, which is an original Motocraft by the looks of it. So it's doing pretty good and uh, it's, it's still fine. It just uh, battery monitor gets a little grumpy, so it should be easy. Okay, next up, boring, but you guys might find this of interest. These things, these air cleaners, all they are is a bloody fan and ridiculous expensive HEPA filters. Uh, these were the cheapest ones I could get for this thing, and I think they were about $40 Canadian, and they want you to change them like every few months. That's craziness. So we'll go ahead and I'll show you what the problem is, other than the whole thing needs cleaned out, but it did its job. Oh. It did its job. That's dust that's not in my house, but we're not going to replace these. We're going to do the good old automotive <laughs> backyard handyman thing. And we'll have a look. Uh, yeah, there's some light through there. It's still, they're still good, but they'll be a hell of a lot better because it's just dust. There's no moisture, no goobers, no bugs. All you can do, you just back blow these with compressed air. Nothing to it. One job down. I haven't even looked at the instructions on this thing. Got this $80 off at Canadian Tire. Um, yeah, I've been shopping for a used shop vac for a year now, and everybody wants full price for a shop vac, even when they're used. I don't understand, so uh, I just had to bite the bullet and get new. But we're gonna swap the filter out to the paper filter because that'll work good with the CNC machine, I think. job I finally got batteries for this uh, from dollar store and then I can have both my temperature gauges working this one's been dead for like a year LR 44s not something I had in the shop yeah what do you know about that they even agree <laughs> this one's in the coolant and this one is just taped to one of the hoses from the pump so pretty cool that's a uh, Oh, that's actually on the output from the laser too. So that gives me a really good indication of what's going on. I don't remember whether this one's on the input or the output. Alrighty, I went ahead and re-terminated every one of the wires because when I started checking the ferrules, they're all like this, just squished with a pair of pliers. And I actually found this one was the ground for the laser tube and it was broken right off. So. This is what a proper ferrule crimp looks like with a proper tool and uh, pretty simple stuff. This will fix it up and give us a really good contact and done thousands of these over the years. About half of my trips up wind turbines, this was the culprit. So easy stuff.
I have these ferro crimp sets uh, in my store link down below. They're cheap on Amazon to have one in stock. One size kind of fits all for most of this hobby stuff. And the key is to have it in your shop before you need it. Otherwise, you're never going to go back and redo these wires. Going to get one shot at it and then you're going to be tempted to just twist them up and shove them in or solder them or whatever. If you have the ferro crimps in stock with a decent crimper, these actually aren't much money compared to the DuPont ones. Uh, you'll do the job right the first time. All right, we're back in business. This thing is just working perfect. I can't explain the amp meter behavior. I think I might just swap that to a little lower one because we don't need any more than 20 milliamps, but this is cutting just beautifully at 22% power. Uh, Needlepoint precision, really, really good. Uh, no charring. I tried at a higher power and it's charred all the heck. So uh, that's way overkill, so. Yeah, but 22% seems to be where it's at. Okay, look at that. Just comes in, ah, that's just awesome. I love that part. And look at that, still brown. It's not torched at all. Oh, that is perfect. Uh, disregard all the rest of the damage around there. That's from me earlier, but uh, around the edges are cut just perfectly. I don't think I can make those any better. We're good to go. That is officially tuned up, back in business, like brand new, new tube, full strength. Oh, I re-aimed it too. Uh, you just put some tape on here and I had to adjust this mirror slightly. We just weren't quite centered. We might have been losing a little bit of power at full extension over here. Yeah, it was poorly aimed, but now we're dead center all the way around. And in case you're interested in seeing it, this is all you need to do is put a little bit of painter's tape over and just tap your test and make sure that you're centered and see how we're pretty close to center there, a little bit off, not too bad. And you just move your laser around to the different locations. Let's go there, we'll hit it. And we're just even a little bit more centered, that's fine. We're staying within pretty true to the center all the way around the bed. And uh, that's all there is to aiming a laser. While the gear is working good, this is a rotary attachment for the K40. Actually, it's a conversion of the existing rotary I got. So I uh, make it low profile so we can engrave mugs and round things. Okie dokie. Pretty awesome. Perfect. Just wonderful. Everything just falls apart. Just perfect. These will be the side rails for our roller. Two of them should be thick enough, I think. We should do the trick. And we're done. That is the final piece we need for our rotary attachment. This is the rotary as it came to me like a year or more ago. And the problem is, is the height here. To use this, you have to cut the bottom of the laser out and cut a big hole in it. Well, this is going to splay everything out and make it nice and low so we don't need to cut the bottom out anymore. We can use the same stepper and we should be able to hopefully use the same bearings and everything. Um, don't know yet, either way, I can mod it up. Uh, I ordered the correct length of belt and that should be it. Should be good to go. Laser and maker space have performed admirably today. Everything is back in business. A new tube, everything is happy. And next up, we still got to get using the 3018. But uh, just so many things to get done first. But cut while the machines are working. That's uh, how I see it. Cheers, guys. And a quick little reprint of this light divider. Now it fits perfectly over the LEDs in the diski. You can see that just a little bit of light down there at the bottom. Oops, maybe a little bit less now. Uh, I made it so there's about a mil clearance, so that'll be perfect to put my little legend in here for the enunciators to shine through. No self-respecting disky can be without a legend for what their LEDs mean. It's about time we finally get this thing so it can speak to us. Oh 
Okay, so this is printed from the PDF that's in my GitHub, and then I took this clear acetate. These are overhead projector transparencies that I used for uh, COVID face shields a while back. And there you go, except uh, we gotta go the other way around. Check that out. Doesn't that look cool? <laughs> All my time dinking around with flight simulators paid off. At least I still know how to make a panel look good. That acetate is the key. Um, all the other ones of these I've seen were just paper underneath. And that now. <laughs> I am so pleased with that. I couldn't be happier. Oh, let's just hope the LEDs look good. I got to get those wired up. Man, oh man, check that out. Yes. Okay, another new part off the good old CR10. Man, this printer still doesn't disappoint, especially with Prusa Slicer now. Works pretty good. These are stands for the Disky. These, when put together, should offer a stand that'll allow the Disky to stand up and angled out towards the audience, which will be pretty cool for displaying it. Hopefully. I didn't design this. This was another designer, and he had posted it on Hackaday, on his Hackaday project, so cheers.